Welcome back to Capital Tonight. I'm Tim Boyum. Tonight we're talking all about education in North Carolina. This week, the new House Select Committee on an Education System for North Carolina's Future had its first public meeting. The committee is designed to take a deep look at our state's education system and work to make changes that will best serve students moving forward. Joining us for more is State Representative John Torbett, a Republican from Gaston County who serves as the senior chair of the Select Committee. So a lot of words in the title of that committee. What, what does this mean? Uh, you know as well as I do, following the news of the day, that parents are concerned about their education of their children. Uh, educators are, under, are concerned about the education and, and the cost of education and the compensation of education. Superintendents are concerned about uh, the, the, the backside of education. And with COVID in line, you, you, a whole lot of stuff is going on. Yeah. And so during this time, actually about six, seven months ago, I started thinking, you know, before all this bubbles up to the point that we have lost it, maybe just go back and start looking at it and try to condense it back to, to, to ground zero, to day one. And so what I uh, approach the speaker, Speaker Moore, with is that why not have a committee to look at education as if we did not have a system of education today? What would it take to build the best system for education today that will carry us forward for the next 100 years instead of continually to try to work on a system that's past 100 years. And so what we're trying to do is look forward as opposed to looking behind and just go in and develop that, that education system for today, taking in all the technology, taking in all the advancements that we know and come out with absolutely the best outcome for the students that will uh, make the parents once again proud and, and, and happy about the education their children are getting. You know this as well as I do, changing institutions and changing that ship is difficult. Uh, tremendous lift, but we have a lot of smart individuals that, that are working on it. We have a lot of smart staff members that have been in education for much longer than I have. Uh, we got some very good folks, and we have subject matter experts. We had people out in the field that have been in education for years, whether they're teachers or superintendents or, 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 or other government. Uh, groups that have worked within the education arena. We have all those that we can bring to bear to, to find the best points that have been working for the people of North Carolina. You know as well as I do, politics is pretty partisan these days and skeptics are going to... I've gonna... heard that, yeah. <laughs> Check your email. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but skeptics might say, look, this is just the Republicans pushing forward even more of trying to privatize education or do more scholarships for private schools. What are you telling us? Folks? Tim, I'm 65 years old. I've, I've been up here in Raleigh working for people of Gaston County in my district for 12 years. Before that, I was eight years a county commissioner working in education. Before that, I was PTO president of every school my daughter went to, except for high school that I called the football games in. It was a great time. <laughs> uh, I've heard all that. And you can either help us from the aid and assist side, or you can continue down the road of uh, animosity or, or, or antagonists and, and work against us. You know, I'm going to focus on the folks that are really wanting to come in here. Let's fix this thing. Let's move forward with it. What are, you know, just for folks at home, uh, starting over from zero, it's a fascinating concept and conversation to have because yeah. you can do things a lot differently. I think you even said in committee about, you know, just because you're 10 doesn't mean you have to be in uh, fourth or fifth grade. Where did Maybe that come from? Grade. Yeah. How, so what are some of the ideas out there that you've heard that are, I mean, how drastically different could a system I, I'll throw some of just my thoughts. I won't speak for anyone other than sure. myself because this is all fresh and new and it's starting to come out. As for example, teachers have been forced to ha do so much more than just teach in the classroom. So maybe remove some of those shackles from the teacher and let them get back to the teaching the basics in the classroom with, the, with their students. And then have someone else addressing those non-teaching type uh, needs of the child. Uh, we started a little bit of that this past budget with you know additional health care, uh, child psychologists, that type of thing. We shouldn't put that on the backs of the teacher. I've heard that from teachers. Uh, uh, what shouldn't? Why to have a child be a certain age, be in a certain class? You already touched on. Uh, that that's two things. Uh, the calendar. We address the calendar every year. I've been up here for 12 years. We address the calendar. I'm tired of addressing the calendar. It's, it's controversial too. Yeah, Holy it is, smokes. It is. Uh, I doubt. Anything will not be controversial that we'll be going through, <laughs> but it's for the best. And we're listening to extremely to parents. Uh, a lot of parents out there are just kind of fed up, and that's no place the state needs to be in education. So how do you do all of that and keep parents, government, and teachers all aligned and together in this? Because it really feels the last few years, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, that that's been separated. And sometimes they've become opponents rather than, you know, uh, working together. It's like I said at the beginning, we, we, we focus on the folks that could come and help aid and assist with information. And if you're trying to uh, get into what we're doing for the sake of just dismantling it or tearing it up 
or blowing it up, for lack of a better term, then, you know, honestly, I don't need you. We want to focus on those parents out there that, that want to help, the students want to help, the teachers want to help, the superintendents want to help, the smart people that, in education that want to help. That's where I hope to get the, or glean the most information from, as well as some subject matter, matter, matter experts. Actually, in the, in the hallowed halls of the People's House of North Carolina, we have some great folks there, too. Jeffrey Elmore, for example, is a teacher, an art teacher. He is not on the committee. I am picked the committee to have non-specific current structure of education folks on the committee. Uh, I just think it would be best to have some fresh, fresh minds on there and then bring those folks in for subject matter experts. We're almost out of time, less than a minute here, but how soon do you think we could see changes and do you expect some of them to be major changes to the system? I do, I do. I think you'll see perhaps, I'm not speaking, I'm just guessing that there may be some small nuances that could be brought to bear in short session. Uh, I don't have any in mind. I have no legislation penned, drafted, or started. I'm just saying if we stumble across something say, hey, if we fix that now, it can do so much positive that perhaps we need to get that implemented during short session. A, a, a total redo, if we get down in this, and first off, if it's decided that's what's needed, we don't even know if that's going to be what's needed. Uh, if it is decided a total redo, then of course that's probably a year down the road or, or a year and a half down the road. All right, we'll see. Once these proposals start coming out more, it'll be fascinating. I hope you come back and talk about it. Love to, have, love to be here. It's great to see you again. It's been a while. All right, yes, it's great to have you back in.